Or pulmonary is a type of right-sided heart failure that occurs due to high blood pressure within the pulmonary circulation. This high pressure increases the resistance that the right ventricle must overcome to pump blood, which is called afterload. Over time, this increased afterload causes structural and functional changes in the right ventricle, leading to core pulmonary. In most cases, afterload increases chronically, resulting in the thickening of the walls of the right ventricle, known as hypertrophy. However, this thickening reduces the chamber's size, reducing the volume of blood it can hold, resulting in a diastolic dysfunction that leads to decreased blood flow. As hypertrophy progresses, it can compress the coronary arteries, blocking the flow of oxygen-rich blood to certain areas of the heart muscle, leading to myocardial ischemia. This weakens the muscle, impeding its ability to contract efficiently, causing a systolic dysfunction. On the other hand, acutely increased afterload can cause dilation of the right ventricle's walls, weakening the muscle and leading to a systolic dysfunction. Regardless of how it occurs, core pulmonary results in reduced blood flow that causes blood to back up into the venous circulation. Core pulmonary is a condition resulting from high blood pressure in the pulmonary circulation, which is also known as pulmonary hypertension, and must be caused by pulmonary disease or disorder. Therefore, pulmonary hypertension caused by left-sided heart failure would not cause core pulmonary, although it can still cause right-sided heart failure. There are several pulmonary diseases or disorders that can cause pulmonary hypertension. However, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is the most common cause of chronic core pulmonary, while a large pulmonary embolism is the most common cause of acute core pulmonary. If you wish to learn more about pulmonary hypertension, you can click the link provided on the screen or in the description down below. Signs and symptoms of core pulmonary usually coincide with the pulmonary disease that caused pulmonary hypertension. Shortness of breath or difficulty breathing during physical activity is the most common initial symptom. As the disease progresses, other symptoms like difficulty breathing at rest, fatigue, fainting, chest pain, lightheadedness, poor oxygenation, increased heart rate, and other symptoms due to blood backing up into the venous system may occur. These symptoms include neck vein distension, abdominal edema or ascites, liver swelling or hepatomegaly, and peripheral edema. To diagnose core pulmonary, a thorough medical history and physical exam is completed, along with a ventilation perfusion scan, also known as a VQ scan, check air and blood flow within the lungs and blood work to measure brain natriuretic peptide, also known as BNP, a hormone that the heart produces more of when it's under stress, an X-ray or CT scan with or without contrast, an ECG, and an echocardiogram may be completed to assess the heart's structure and function, including any signs of right ventricle hypertrophy. A right heart catheterization may also be performed to measure various pressures within the heart and pulmonary arteries. To treat core pulmonary, it's crucial to intervene early, manage symptoms, avoid complications, and address both pulmonary hypertension and its root cause. Early intervention can prevent irreversible heart damage. Diuretics like furosemide can help manage edema, but must be used cautiously to prevent overdiuresis that can worsen symptoms by reducing overall cardiac output. The Joxin may improve right ventricle contraction, but its use in treating core pulmonary is controversial. Supplemental oxygen can treat hypoxemia, which is vital for tissue oxygenation and preventing vasoconstriction of pulmonary arteries that worsens pulmonary hypertension. Some individuals may require home oxygen. Anticoagulants may be used prophylactically to prevent blood clots, which can occur due to slowed blood flow in core pulmonary. In severe cases, a heart-lung transplant may be considered. Other treatments aim to treat pulmonary hypertension and its underlying cause. Preventing the underlying cause of pulmonary hypertension can help in avoiding core pulmonary. However, most causes of pulmonary hypertension cannot be prevented. Nevertheless, one can slow down the progression of the disease by quitting smoking and following recommended treatments. Despite these efforts, the prognosis of core pulmonary is often poor and disabling. This wraps up everything you need to know as a nurse about core pulmonary. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please share your support by liking the video, subscribing, and turning on the notification bell to stay up to date. Also feel free to drop a comment below if you have any video suggestions. Thank you and bye!